So here is the column that you'll be working with. It's more of a syringe with a sample in it. So this brown sample here is the cation exchange column. All right? And this column currently is, has got a very little bit of, um, of buffer on the top. So it's got a cap here, which you can remove. So when you remove the cap, it will start to drip. The solution starts to drip through. OK? So what effectively you're doing, you've got um, a column with your matrix, OK? It, it comes with a bit of buffer on there already. And you run that buffer <laughs> through the gel, through it, to give you your matrix with a meniscus. Now, it's important when you do this that you don't let that little bit of buffer on the top there sink into the column. That's the, that's the key thing which will spoil your results. So never let the, the top of the column dry out. All right? So there's, I can see I've just got a little meniscus there of a few, of a few drops, so I'll just... So I'll let those couple of drops out. Okay, so the first thing you do once you've, um, once your column's, that, that column's now ready to be loaded, okay, because the, the, the buffer that it's sitting in is flush with the top of the column. What you then do is you then, you get the right pipette, make sure you've done your pipette license, okay, and um, this is set at one mil. You can, there's also some plastic loading pipettes you do. This is your unknown amino acid, okay? You just load this amino acid. Now, when you're loading it, I'm going to load a bit of buffer rather than amino acid simply because I want a student to be able to use this and I don't want to contaminate the thing. But what you would actually load is your amino acid sample. So when you're loading your amino acid, you, you get your, your mill and you just dribble it down the side of the tube gently. So I am... I, you can't see it in this thing but I am very gently pipetting my sample onto the wall of the, of the tube. To this matrix, you load your amino acid on the top, yeah? Now, there's a bit of confusion because in the matrix already is the citrate buffer, which was here in the column. There's my amino acid. So I've just loaded that, in theory, onto my column. Okay? So if you look at the column now, you can see that it's got two mils of sample above the meniscus there. All right? And then whilst it's in here, don't take it out of here, but whilst it's in there, you would then just pop off the lid and collect two mils of sample into that tube there. Okay? So you can see this is running down. So you let it run until it's close to, but not dry. You need to run the amino acid into the column, but the notes also say that you're running the citrate buffer out of the column into the tube, and that's where it's causing a bit of confusion. So once you run the amino acid into the column, your amino acid now is here. So there's your amino acid in the column, and a bit of... Um, citrate came out okay so now that's where it so what's happened now is the amino acid solution has run into and has bound to the matrix if you had your two mils of buff of amino acid solution there and you added your buffer on top then your amino acid would just mix into the buffer and then you'd just be running dilute amino acids and it would take it just wouldn't work. So the first thing you need to do is bind this to your column. So you need to bind this to here by loading it first. Once it's down, flush with the top, you can then take your first buffer, which is, this is my first buffer here, and then you just load the buffer again onto the sample. Again, you're doing it slowly. Maybe I'll just... Um, I mean, do it when it's in the thing, but I just want to show you that it's, it's load, I'm loading slowly down the side. So I'm just... The next thing you do into the column is just a little bit of citrate. 
Now, the volume of this citrate is smaller than the capacity of the column. Yeah, and that's important because when you run that citrate now into the column, your amino acid, your amino acid now is loaded into the column proper, pro proper okay? So it's important to add just a mil here, or whatever it says, and then to run that through because it pushes the amino acid into the column. So there's no amino acid now at the top of the meniscus, okay? And now when you take that long column and you load it up with mils of citrate, there's no mixing of the citrate buffer with the amino acid that's in the column. So now when you, t you, t now when you do your five times two mil samples, you can be sure that the, the, the amino acid was already in the column before you started the big load. So, so that's, the, that's the sort of the series of steps that you're doing to set up the procedure. Or you load, you just follow the procedure and then you collect two mils in each of these tubes. So if I was to collect, you know, my first two mils of, of the first sample and then I would move the tube along and collect another sample. So in other words, you're going to collect lots of two mil samples here. And then to each of these samples, you'll do that ninhydrin test to establish whether there's an amino acid in that sample or not. And you should get a peak of a particular tube or two where your sample collects. All right. So it's a very rough demonstration, but hopefully it helps you do that part of the experiment. Firstly, you're just running a bit of the old buffer out. You're then loading your amino acid in a small volume. You're then pushing that into the column, but it's only on the top of the column. So you add a bit more citrate buffer and just run that bit in, but you're actually really running the amino acid into the column and you haven't added enough buffer to elute the amino acid. So the amino acid can only be in the column. You then stack it up with the 10 mils and collect your two mil samples. So if you get something wrong during this step here, it probably won't work. But if you get this bit right, then you should get really nice results.